Let's lift up our hands and bless his name. Bless his name. Wave your hands from side to side to Jesus, the one who sits upon the throne. Go ahead and bless him. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him with your understanding. He is why we are here. He is why we remain. Worship him. Call him everything you know him to be. Savior. Deliverer. Lifter. Helper. For he is God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you are God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Searched all over, couldn't find no one. I looked high and low, still couldn't find no one. I searched all over, couldn't find no one. I looked high and low, still couldn't find no one. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. There of the worlds and they that dwell therein, Majesty. Father, we bless you for everything that is good in this house, for everything that is excellent in this house, for everything that glorifies Jesus in this house we return glory we are wise enough to know that except God be with a man there are things we cannot do Nicodemus came to Jesus and said Rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him and Lord while the world in their honesty credit the achievements to us may we remain ushers pointing them to you may we be unashamed and vocal about letting the world know that without you there is nothing absolutely nothing we can do you are the force behind everything good in this house you are the mystery behind the results that we so lavishly command. But Lord, let the world know that beyond our results, we love you. And that we are desperate for you, that we love you more than things. We love you more than positions. We love you more than ministry. We love you more than prayer. We love you more than Bible study. We love you more than church and religion. We love you more than spiritual titles. We love you more than heaven. For you are God alone From before time began You are on your throne You are God and You are God alone 
before time began You are on your throne You are God alone You are God alone, you are God alone. From before time Thank you, Jesus. Tonight we have come as proof that we desperately desire your presence. Tonight we have come as proof that we trust you. Tonight we have come as proof that we remain hungry and intentional for knowledge, for growth, for transformation. We have come to honor the potency of your word the ministry of your spirit we have come to you the rabbi of all the ages the wisdom of God we pray that the hallowed bread of the spirit be opened and served us tonight that we may eat and indeed grow therefore Lord we declare that tonight there is the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles Amen. that whilst your word comes tonight and as you challenge us and expose us to the mysteries of the kingdom let the sick not return sick Amen. let the oppressed not return oppressed Amen. let there be all kinds of manifestations of your grace your love and your power and as always we vow that you remain glorified you remain lifted in our midst in jesus name we pray amen, amen. god bless you please be seated the lord and then we're really honored tonight to have a very very great man in our midst <laughs> hallelujah amen this is a house of honor and this is a man who um truly loves the lord but then he has come to symbolize authority in the area of faith and family he is truly a voice that when you follow he can lead you from anywhere to anywhere i just thought we should honor him before we get to the world ladies and gentlemen please be upstanding as we honor pastor kingsley okonko god bless you sir thank you thank you thank you you're welcome god bless you please be seated hallelujah Amen. If you have not listened to Pastor Kingsley, um, I think you should begin immediately. There is, there, is, there is a lot to learn. His wisdom is profound. Yes, profound. Thank you, sir. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. We remain resolute in our commitment to feed God's people. He says, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart, which will feed you in knowledge and understanding. The primary assignment of a man of God is to ensure that believers who have been saved and have been planted in a spiritual family that they are fed and taught the word of God and the content of that word is doctrine we have discussed it here doctrine is the course curriculum that makes for the growth of the believer and week in week out we continue to explore different facets of the kingdom life to the end that number one we get to know the Lord the more then we understand his ways then we obtain grace and help from God to represent him very effectively. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight, um, I'll begin a teaching that I believe will end up as a series because um, 
we may not be able to exhaust it tonight and in an attempt to explain the things that happen around our society you know i have i have said this and and i thank god we have people here politicians business people members of parliament so i'm happy because every time we learn this we are happy because we can take this there is there is um we we can apply this and then it helps not just towards kingdom advance but also towards nation building any nation and any territory is a reflection of number one the health and the strength of the spiritual conviction of the people that live within that territory every territory is a reflection of the spiritual conviction or otherwise of the people that live within that territory which invariably is a product or is a reflection of the quality of the spiritual voices that feed the people so when you pick anyone in abuja or any part of the world at all at random and engage the believers there their level and extent of spiritual understanding is a report card that shows the quality of the shepherds within that territory if there is a problem with the understanding of the average christian then the men and the women of god within that territory are to be blamed that means there is an imbalance or there is error that is coming from the pulpit because people are largely they will act in honor to their convictions which come from the propositions that come from the altar so if we want to correct the living what we see in our society among other factors we have to re-examine the kind the extent and the quality of spiritual information that comes from the pulpit effective living is a product of effective thinking when people think wrong they will live wrong when they think right they will live right the bible says this sign shall follow them that believe that means anything following you is proof of what you believe you don't when you are tired of seeing what has been following you you don't drive it away physically change what you believe everything that follows you comes in honor to something you are believing if trouble is always following you it may be empowered by demons but principally there is something about your understanding and your perspective and your approach to life that authorizes those ills to follow you if favor goodness and mercies if, if all these these positive attributes are following you there is something that your understanding is doing as far as making for their continuity around your life are we together so our assignment principally is to expose us to what the bible calls the ways of god and let me tell you this in as much as the curriculum that makes for our growth is finite um there is there is a vast body of knowledge spiritual knowledge we need to learn about who we are in christ the reality of our positional advantage our, our oneness with christ we need to understand the economic system of the kingdom this is what makes for the supplies and the provisions of the saints we need to understand the fact that we live in a world that is plagued by demons principalities and powers jesus and scripture did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that we are not alone there is another species of beings that cohabit with us and whether we are prepared or not they are interested in our affairs and so he teaches us how to manage our living such that we live victorious in spite of satan and his cohorts are we together we need to learn principles that make for territorial dominion i told you that the gospel is divided into two there is the message that saves then there is the ideology that transforms if the only thing you receive is the message that saves you are saved but your territory may not be safe s-a-f-e it takes the ideology of the gospel the value system of the kingdom to permeate systems and structures so that now christ and his purposes are institutionalized not just in the hearts of men but across every strata of human activities this is the only way that christ becomes enthroned not just in our hearts but in our environment 
it's unfortunate all over the world and even in our nation right now we're in we're in serious times of crisis from economic crisis to high rates of crime terrorism i just returned from zaria and um, sadly and unfortunately the north is beginning to be um, a reflection of something that we have prayed never to happen did you know that every one terrorist every one troublemaker was once a baby in the hand of a woman is that true something transformed those individuals from babies to become now living like beasts every deliverer was once a baby in the hands of a woman including jesus in the flesh that means when we see the decadence in society the decadence in society is a reflection of something that is wrong and and please just allow me to express my passion for a few minutes trying to solve societal problems by just coming up with corrective measures as it were will not ultimately achieve that goal is that true thank god for the prison cells thank god for the police thank god for the military but fundamentally you need to understand that the things that continue to plague society historically is proof that something fundamentally is wrong with the value system of the people generally speaking we live in honor to and of our convictions whatever you believe eventually you will leave it out is that true when you meet a terrorist now and interview him he will give you an interesting perspective about life his perspective and his conviction is what motivates his passion to cause mayhem and destruction and even at the detriment of the advancement of his society he believes he's doing right if you meet a good man who is blessing people lifting people educating people behind what he's doing there is a value system there is a conviction is that true that means we have to be careful we have to carefully fashion and design the value systems that we communicate because value systems are dangerous people will live in honor of and to those value systems when people reject God in mass, there must be a poisonous information that is being sold that makes God look like a nuisance to civilization. When revival breaks out, in as much as it's the power of God, healing, signs, and wonders, but let me tell you, there is something that must have been done right, and people embrace the value. They see the importance and the value of Jesus Christ. We, when you live in a society that is lawless, a society that does not honor the rule of law, a society that is careless and does not care, people live very irresponsible lives, is a reflection of a faulty value system. I always like to understand the motivation behind things more than the actions. You really solve problems when you dig into the motivation behind things when you address symptoms symptoms do not provide effective solutions you have to move past the symptoms and then address the solutions when you see someone for instance please look up you see someone walking in failure living a defeated life trying to address the problem the obvious problem may not bring the final solution when you dig in and dig in and dig in eventually you will find out that there is a spiritual problem with that person maybe he has rejected jesus maybe he has refused the gospel now for someone who has refused the gospel the the probability for a life of defeat is 100 percent regardless how successful that person is anything can happen because there is no system of security it is only the name of the lord that is a strong tower and it is only the righteous that is allowed to run to it not anybody not god's creation that door does not just open his name becomes a strong tower when it you are the righteous you run into it and you are safe 
hallelujah so i thought tonight to begin um an exposition on what i titled the antichrist system now it's, it's going to be a series but i'll give them different topics but i just thought tonight to open us up to this mystery babylon this godless system that is the software that is behind the eels in our world it's important to understand that men have been programmed institutions have been programmed and we must carefully detect that spiritual software that is at the back of the decadence of families of territories of institutions of lives and so on and so forth are we in agreement praise the name of the lord revelation chapter 11 and verse 15 thank you jesus revelation chapter 11 and verse 15 the bible says and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever so i begin my teaching with the end of the story that whether we like it or not one day this prophecy will happen that a day will come regardless the arrogance of kings regardless the pride of men the power and the might of jesus the one who we have so hailed will compel this world that is a part of his creation to come into alignment and the kingdoms of this world must become the kingdoms of our lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever he shall reign forever he shall reign forever and ever he shall reign forever he shall reign forever he shall reign forever as it is now there's still confusion all across the world who is really lord there are nations that are fighting for supremacy the world powers fighting themselves but the bible tells us in psalm 24 and verse 1 the earth is the lord's the resources there it's called the fullness then the walls and the inhabitants they that dwell therein they all belong to him one more scripture please hmm. third john chapter one and verse two please just follow carefully let's read together if you can see it projected ready one to read please beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers i've done a teaching around this but you see this is a very serious statement even as your soul prospers even as your soul prospers that it is good that you prosper and be in health but ensure that whilst you prosper your soul also prospers can we add two more scriptures mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 from verse 36 jesus is teaching now mark chapter 8 and verse 36 for what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world jesus is speaking business now profit he's talking gaining a language that everybody wants to hear what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul there is a system that has controlled our civilization until now in fact let me start it this way the bible clearly shows us that there is a conflict of two kingdoms everyone please say two kingdoms yes that men do not just live like animals we are not just homo sapiens there is a contention between two kingdoms the bible calls one the kingdom of darkness is that true and then the other the bible calls the kingdom of god's dear son 
so we know for a fact that there are two kingdoms all men regardless religion regardless your sociological orientation the bible is very clear as to the fact that we are immersed in a conflict that is between two kingdoms first information second information the bible clearly lets us know that this clash and this vendetta between these kingdoms predate our existence so we're in the middle of something that is older than our appearing here the war did not start with us it did not start from us are we together revelation chapter 12 please and verse 7 john was caught to the third heavens when he was banished theologically speaking john was banished to die when he would not be burned in the hot oil and all of that and then he was banished to an island called patmos and there he received the revelation of jesus christ and now in chapter 12 from verse 7 these were some of the things that were shown john remember the angel told him right for these words are faithful and true then when we get to chapter 4 chapter 5 he was told come up hither and i will show you so john was taken down memory lane and he was told here an old story this is the fact that it's in revelation does not mean it's a new story this is a very old story are we together and there was war in heaven i can preach all night on that sentence that means there is no life that is spared in heaven there was war if there was war in heaven then it is not unusual to have war around your life even in heaven where god dwells there was war there was war in heaven and then the bible says michael and his angels fought against the dragon the dragon fought with his angels uh oh his angels in heaven this should already give you a description of the kind of adversary we are dealing with that in heaven satan sold an idea to the angels that they saw god sitting on his throne in spite of the splendor of heaven there was something satan told them that they preferred his authority than the one who sits on the throne whoever has that kind of power you should pay attention to him follow me this night we're we are, we are on a journey that god will grant us grace over now we're examining because when we talk about earth earth is mad with all kinds of prejudices politics and the rest so let's look at heaven where christ himself is seated all this rubbish is going on in heaven the one who sits on the throne is there the miracle worker the way maker and yet there is a treacherous fellow selling an idea and according to scripture next verse let's go to verse 8 that he fought and he prevailed not the fact that satan could fight god remember I, <laughs> please look up look up let me explain something to you we are tracing where this that has destroyed our world we are tracing where it came from politicians understand this this is what keeps you for hours in the house of assembly trying to come up with policies that correct the madness in society it matters this is not a christian message this is a message that eventually leads to national transformation it, this is not a christian perspective we have to trace where the problem is coming from as at the time this problem started there was no religion as at the time this problem started there were no men of god as at the time this problem started there were no educational institutions so everything we are blaming is not the real problem follow this please give out that scripture the bible says once upon a time it leaves us with a story that is a compass to give us wisdom on how to correct the ills in society and produce a territory that glorifies god restores human dignity and makes advancement that reflects the love of the father are we together so there is a problem we are trying to diagnose right now 
that Satan in the presence of God because of treachery and treason that he actually came to a point where he sold an idea we'll be reading shortly but that one third of the angels now we do not know how many angels are in heaven the Bible does not give us the figure but at least we know the ones who fell with Lucifer one third of these angels what gave him the audacity I will tell you Satan's creation and Satan's assignment is what gave him the audacity to believe I wish I had time would have dealt with what we have called the parable of talents have you read the parable of talents that says there was a man who came and gave on to three people five talents two talents and one talent that thing you see is not just a parable talking about money there is prophecy hidden in it it reveals something that happened years ago but anyway let's go back to our subject for tonight so satan prevailed not read on please the bible says neither was found any place for him in heaven so he's about to be displaced now and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent even at that time he was old called the devil so that there's no confusion and satan which deceived the whole world he was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him so this is where the relocation happened now from heaven came to the earth next verse and i heard a loud voice in heaven saying now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our god day and night 11 and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony so satan was cast down from heaven he came to the earth now watch this scene one tells us that satan rebelled against god michael fought him sin two shows us the misery and the disgrace of satan is that true we see satan cast down in shame in fact he says woe to the inhabitants of the earth for satan that dragon has come down with great fury the next time we hear about satan everybody on earth was under his control what a man what a spirit really not a man satan is not a man if he was a man there would have been a possibility for his sins being forgiven because salvation is for men so satan is not a man that's one of the reasons why he cannot be saved salvation is for men are we together now so satan is cast to the earth follow me to matthew chapter 4 jesus now comes in the flesh as the son of mary Matthew chapter 4, let's start from verse 1, please. And Jesus was led up of the Spirit. This was after his baptism. He was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. That same devil now. So his audacity did not end. He still believes. Anywhere he sees God, he still has the strength. What a stubborn man. After many, many years. You see that? So that you will know Satan's determination to destroy you. When you see who else he has tried, you will know how serious he can stay to destroy you if you give him room. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says afterwards Jesus now was unhungered. Verse 2. When the tempter came to him, let's look at the context of the temptation. He said, number one, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread but he answered jesus now and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god we'll discuss this later then the second temptation watch this satan take it him take it who what does it mean to take somebody this was the guy who was cast down to the earth 
you would think it was game over and by the time we get here satan has that audacity to take him to a holy city and to set him at the pinnacle of the temple next verse and he said unto him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands shall they bear thee up lest thou dash thy foot against a stone next verse and jesus said unto him again it is written thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god now i'm interested in the last temptation if you are a christian and you are interested in what i'm saying please help me read ready one to read again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the kingdoms uh-huh and the glory of them stop please satan the first temptation has to do with your personal needs hunger feed yourself the second temptation has to do with your worship and your spirituality please keep that scripture there but the third temptation now has to do with the kingdom and the glory thereof satan took jesus into a high mountain this is not just climbing a hill no this is a prophetic language what kind of mountain is it that when you stand you see the glories of the whole world this is a spiritual location this is not a physical place that it took him maybe like a mountain and altitude no next verse verse 9 watch this and he saith unto him we finally arrived my place of interest all these things i will give thee <sighs> what a businessman this guy was cast from heaven empty in shame by the time jesus arrives his own earth satan is so wealthy he's saying don't think i am empty just bow to me and i will give you if you will fall down and worship me if you do not understand this you will not understand the system that controls the activities of men that means all the glory that satan acquired from adam he was not interested in it there was something else that was greater than that to him the worship so when jesus came he said let me save you trouble let me save you going through the rigor of three and a half years the cross the grave just bow to me and i will give you these glories verse 10 and jesus said unto him get thee ten satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve this gives us a clue to what satan has been looking for that satan is not looking for the child of a barren woman that's not what he's looking for satan is not looking for the prosperity of a rich man that's not what he's looking for satan is not looking to cut short the life of someone all these things are not the things he's looking for there is something else that he's looking for you need to know what motivates the passion of satan this is it he met Jesus and said, instead of telling God on the throne to bow, since you are his image, just bow and I will give you everything. Are you getting that now? Watch this. This also reveals the character of Satan's way of doing business. Because here we see that Satan is a businessman. Make reference to what I'm saying. What shall it profit a man if he will gain and lose? For you to do business, there must be demand and supply and there must be people at the at both ends so satan is a businessman he's not just an accuser and that there is the character of his business are you seeing that now he acquires everything and tells you the only thing i need from you is your allegiance and you will have it and jesus said get thee behind me how did satan get this when you go to genesis chapter 3 when satan was cast down and the earth was judged we dealt with this already genesis 1 verse 2 there was darkness there was void there was formlessness across the face of the earth is that true and then god said light be elohim said light be and there was light and then recreation not the original creation the original creation did not happen in genesis chapter 1 the genesis account was not the first creation the Genesis account was a recreation after the judgment of Lucifer. It was the judgment of Lucifer that led to the chaos that we see. Are we still together? 
now genesis chapter 3 please give it to us genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord had made it may interest you to know that the serpent initially was a beast a beast is a four-footed creature can you see he was subtle than any beast of the field which the lord had made and he said unto the woman notice how satan destroys because according to god's ranking watch this now when god gave man dominion the seraphims are headed by the cherubims the cherubims are headed by the woman the woman is headed by the man man is headed by god this is the organogram now it does not mean i just mean in ranking of honor you get what i'm saying now this is how it is so satan could not have the power to talk to adam there was no reference of a discussion between satan and adam until he fell but what satan wanted was with adam but the only way he could come to adam was to come to his eve you will now know why he's still disturbing the eve of the second adam the church because he's looking for what is in that adam still but he cannot confront that adam again because he's now been exalted lord and christ and there is no space for him so he's still using the same genesis strategy he wanted what adam was given but he had to come through eve let's study the character of that temptation the moment he met the woman he said yeah had god said so the first point of probe is the word of god when satan comes to you he wants to find out what god said because the instance of god's word is where his ministry starts he wants to know what did god say concerning your life what did god say concerning your family if god has not said anything concerning you satan has no business with you he will pass you like this you will call him he will not even come believe me you can say how are you and he says i'm busy but the moment god speaks concerning you satan is ready he's, he's he's ready to stay and find out could that be why attacks started in your life the moment prophecy came that there is something you are a child of destiny could that be why africa is under this plague because there is an end time word upon africa that we are that continent that will return christ back that rejected stone Just help those under the anointing. Please pay attention. Give us that scripture you're going. So he questioned the woman. Had God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman replies, verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Of course, I don't want to go into the whole theological thing. You know that eating there is a prophetic statement. It doesn't necessarily mean physical eating. But because what, that's not what we're dealing with, let's just let it be so. And he said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, verse 3. But the fruit of the tree, which in, is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So there is death tied to that tree. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Let me tell you how Satan attacks. Number one, he studies what God has said to you. Then he brings in a proposition that makes God look like a scammer in your life. Notice now. Is it really true that you can thrive in our world without corruption? Even God knows. And he sugarcoats that truth. Please keep the scripture there for god don't know are you seeing what satan is telling the woman now he's saying there is something god is hiding from you and he was not entirely wrong there was an information god did not want man to necessarily know is the information that was hidden in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but it was for the safety of the man there are things god says it should not concern you is for your safety for god doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof what will happen your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil so he's saying that god 
is not sponsoring your advancement and your growth he's insecure there is something he's trying to hide from you watch what happened when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof now let me tell you this her eating of the fruit was not what made her fall she had already fallen her eating of the fruit was a was proof that something had entered her and once in a while let me settle this controversy where men blame women the bible says that when she ate she gave to her husband who was with her so adam was there with her she didn't just eat it and go and call him no adam was there with her the woman fell because she was deceived the man fell because of love apostle peter taught us adam was not deceived it was the woman who was deceived so also the second eve was deceived but the second adam was not deceived what made him leave heaven to the earth love you see that now the second adam was not he was not a, a deceit that brought him he willingly gave up the throne and came down as proof of his love for his bride are we together when that happened let's look at the punishment and then we'll begin to build very quickly and he did it verse 7 the bible says the eyes of them both were open now notice what happened do you know what this means that the eyes of them both it didn't just mean they were enlightened no there was a rearrangement of god's spiritual structure of how man should perceive it was always the spirit of man first is that true and then the mind and then the body the spirit was always in control the will emotions intellect what we call the mind was next and then the body executed whatever the mind did and the mind was subject to the spirit this act rearranged everything and you will see there that the first thing that followed was you will see attributes of emotions they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves and made themselves aprons verse 8 and they had the voice of god walking in the cool of the day the hebrew rendition says and they had the talking spirit walking in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord this was a man who god would come in the cool of the day and fellowship with him the creator and his creature now man was running away from the presence of god and he hid amongst the trees this was the first man-made solution the first man-made solution we are aware of are you seeing where the first solution came from many other solutions have tried to come to solve the problem the first man-made solution to the sin problem and the problem of separating from god was to run away from god and to come up with a temporary solution and adam the lord called adam look at how god respects authority when god gets to the garden he does not say all of you come mm -mm. man i left you as head and you are the first i will speak to there's no mention that god spoke to eve until adam gave him permission look how god honors this structure and the lord god called adam and said unto him adam and he said where art thou verse 10 and he said i heard your voice in the garden but i was afraid afraid of what because i hid because i was naked verse 11 so this is where all deception comes from and he said who told you adam what did you allow to get into your thinking this is not part of the content of what i gave you who have you been listening to because your life is now executing an information I, I, am i still making sense the moment god saw adam's action he didn't say why did you do this he said who told you in other words your action is only a slave to your thinking you have listened to someone so when you see the armed robber stealing it is not the stealing when you see the terrorist killing 
it is not the killing when you see the person corrupt it is not the corruption the real question is who told you what is the institution that is feeding your understanding when a man beats his wife calls her idiot stupid maims the children abuses everybody the real question is not why are you beating her the hand is honoring something here the real question is who told you respectfully speaking when a politician sits in office and siphons resources that should be for roads siphons resources that should be for several other things the real question is not what took your hand there is who told you this is from the mouth of god himself this is how god addresses problems he does not address problems by looking at actions he addresses problems by looking at the motivation You're, you are honoring a conviction when you know this you will know how to help people whether in the prison the correctional centers and all around that's why i said this is not just a message for christians the moment you find people walking in a way that should not be the first part of call is not their action the first part of call is to attack the information that is creating their conviction until that information is corrected they will always act in honor to their convictions so when there is a high rate of irresponsibility among people within a society it's not about why are you not working or why are you lazy go back and find out the voice that is feeding them who told you please give us the scripture who told you that you were naked has thou eaten of that tree whereof i commanded that thou should not eat the first demonstration of irresponsibility from the bible are you ready to see it the man said the woman that's where adam lost his authority every time you blame something else you transfer authority to it that's how adam transferred authority to eve you will now see that it was after this statement god started talking to eve and the man said the woman that thou gavest to be with me in other words is between you and her if you did not bring her here i will be all right you see what is wrong with the man and she gave me of the tree and i did eat and the lord said to the woman the first time he's talking to the woman after the man sealed his sense of irresponsibility he said what is this that thou has done this is how the woman gave satan authority the woman said the serpent if the woman kept quiet she will be head over man immediately the woman said the serpent beguiled me and i did it let me tell you how satan became the god of this world and the lord said to satan because you have done this out of the four of them the only person who did not talk was the person who eventually carried the authority man spoke transferred his authority to the woman the woman spoke transferred her authority to the serpent the serpent kept quiet so when jesus was with pontius pilate wanting to restore the authority while they were talking what did he do this also means there is a dimension of dominion that is expressed in silence generally speaking when people talk too much it is considered that they are irrational and there is a level of immaturity this is true whether in government in business in family there is a level of maturity notice when they came and met jesus a woman who was caught in adultery what did he do he kept quiet and was just writing and he got off from the standpoint of wisdom and said he who has no sin should cast the first stone end of discussion even a fool the bible says when he is silent he is considered wise Are we learning the ways of God? Next scripture. The Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of your life. 15. I will put enmity between the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh huh. Verse 16, 
unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow shall thou bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee 17 and unto adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree which i commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat cursed is the ground for your sake in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life and then when you read it says tons and thistles will come out he drove them out of eden and then there was a cherubim and a flaming sword that protected eden from this instance we begin to see a manifestation of toiling of hardship is that true then the bible tells us that adam knew his wife and she bore him cain and abel now there's a lot of theological argument as to whether cain and abel were twins because the bible does not make reference of eve getting pregnant again the next time the bible tells us adam knew his wife she gives birth to a son called enoch and he says men began to call upon the name of the lord is that true but then you will notice something very strange in every expression of the genealogy in the bible cain and abel are not mentioned read the genealogy in the gospel whenever it gets to enoch the son of adam the son of god so we know for sure that there is a mystery behind these two fellows cain and abel because when we get to the pauline epistles Paul begins to give us a revelation of Cain and Abel as an expression of the spirit and the flesh. Is that true? Abel being representing the spirit man and the spirit walk and Cain representing the flesh. But that's not where I'm headed to. Now, we're in a situation where we want to investigate how this demonic software spread to come to our region now. Are we together now? The Bible says in the book of genesis chapter 6 let's look at genesis chapter 6 be patient you'll begin to make sense to you genesis in fact let's start with genesis 4 genesis chapter 4 uh verse 16 let's look at genesis 4 16 the bible says and cain went out of the presence of the lord look up please very interesting statement it was a psalmist who said where can i hide from your presence so now he's saying cain went out of the presence of god do you know what this means cain willingly unsubscribed to the governing influence of heaven as an act of his will i am no longer interested in you god i'm not interested in your government i want to live my life by myself so we see direct rebellion against the government of god and he dwelt in the land of nod in the east of eden uh-huh and cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare enoch and he builded a city let me correct myself seth not enoch forgive me the the other son of of adam is seth not enoch enoch was the first son of cain and he built a city wow so this is the first time we see that a man is attempting to build a city outside of the governing influence of the christ notice the character of the antichrist system the moment it rebels against god it seeks to build something a monument that honors self number two do you notice that cain built the city and he named the city after his son satan never says worship me he will always project something that came out of him revelation 13 you will see right the beast projects the antichrist and says to worship the antichrist remember that dragon satan will never come and say worship me directly as it were but he will build something that comes out from him and say worship it this is the character of his subjugating men and bringing men under this antichrist system cain did not name the city after him he named the city after his son enoch from that time watch this rebellion People did not subscribe to the government of God again. By the time we get to Genesis chapter 6, give us Genesis chapter 6. We'll read from verse 1, but verse 5 is the verse of emphasis. Genesis 6 
and verse 1 look up please and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them uh-huh the bible says verse 2 the sons of god saw the daughters of men i don't want to get into this there is a big confusion around here but i know we talk about the nephilims the giant the the, the race of giants um, the nephilims are not the only race of giants but they are a unique race of giants because they came as as a product of intercourse between these fallen angels the daughters of men the, the children that came from that union they are called the nephilims giants they were superhumans an example was goliath of gath another example oak the king of bashan you read all these people and you see that they were they had superhuman qualities and can i surprise you there is still a remnant of that race here it is not expressed in their being huge is expressed by the unusual way they operate it is not only pure humans that are on earth there are other humanoid species on earth the bible tells us the coming of christ will be like the days of noah in the days of noah they were not alone there were other humanoid species that are now interacting you see science talks about ufos talks about all of these things they are not telling lies it is true there are all kinds of alien civilizations that have been here and others that are coming and attempting to corrupt the race when you know all of this you will know why the bible says wherefore god has so highly exalted him above and given him a name above every other name above every other name means there are many names and all those names carry levels of authority are we together next verse the sons of god saw that the daughters of men were fair and they took them to wives of all which they chose verse 3 and the lord said watch this now god is speaking my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is uh, he is also his flesh and his days shall be a hundred and twenty years there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of god came into the daughters of men and they bear children to them the same became mighty men who were men of renown verse 5 this is where i wanted us to get to and god saw please look up believers and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every so this is the source of the wickedness the source of the wickedness is not just satan that this wickedness also depends on creativity his imagination has a role to play and the thoughts in his heart are you seeing that now god again is addressing this problem you see that every time god addresses man he does not just address what you are doing he addresses the fact that there a spirit has hijacked your imagination and your creativity follow me closely because we are going to get to a point where we see the value of transformation that for as long as the only thing we do is evangelism we are going to produce a very godless society to your shock that people are just saved and just remain there nothing happens to their mind their minds will still become fruitful tools that the devil will use evangelism transformation empowerment these are the keys that preserve evangelism brings them transformation changes them empowerment now engraces them and releases them to be effective people what has happened largely in the church is that we have done extremely well and by the privilege of god's grace we have to give it to the church we have done well in terms of evangelism but then we bring in a lot of harvests and we leave them there and they do not know what to do and satan says well the best would have been to stop you from receiving jesus but now that i cannot do anything about your decision i am glad that your mind is still a barren and a fruitful ground for me so you find out that there is no difference between a believer and an unbeliever as far as societal transformation is concerned because an heir as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all are we together please keep that scripture i hope god is helping us 
I know it's a long journey, just be patient. I need to be this meticulous so that we'll really understand. Don't forget where we are coming from. From heaven, war in heaven, Satan comes down to the earth and we see that wickedness has filled everywhere. We are examining how Satan became so effective in this agenda. That even though the people who were perpetrators of those wickedness, they are long dead, but the agenda still remains the same. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So, before a man becomes an armed robber, he does not just go and pick up a gun, ladies and gentlemen. Satan comes to that man and before he introduces that concept to that man to destroy he first checks what is in his mind satan is a master with checking minds even when he's delivered jesus taught us he returns back and checks what is there if he finds the room swept clean but empty will he leave it empty he will go and gather other spirits so he finds a young man visionary great young man he finds a great woman visionary great woman but then he sees that there is no methodical system of transferring the principles the value system of the kingdom into that person are we together now what happens is that he now fashions a strategy of deception how does he deceive by proposing to you something that only god can give why do people take drugs why do occultists and all these people do what they do because they want to get high they and in that state they feel superior why do people join cultism in campuses because there is a proposition to them they let them know that if you join this occultic group there is some kind of immunity is that true Why do we have all kinds of deadly clubs and societies today that destroy people? Because they, they attach some sense of significance to it. Why do you suddenly respect me when you see a nice shoe and a nice dress? It doesn't matter whether I'm a nice person or not because you have been trained that once you see that physical expression, it may mean that I am greater and more superior than someone. So if that is the system of marketing, a lot of young people who would have started their lives growing with honor and dignity to scale till they become responsible they will find a way of getting tomorrow to arrive today since you have told me that the only way to respect me is when i wear a designer shoe a designer watch satan now capitalizes on that mindset and says look i can show you a way 10 years to be blessed is too long do you have that time no after all god gives speed you say it's true so he will tell you now listen i'm going to tie it up with the scripture we also read what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul the mindset the value system the imagination of people hijacked by the power of darkness so satan does not mind whether you are evil he does not mind whether you are yoruba he does not mind whether you are you are hausa he does not mind whether you are an american an european an asian he knows that we all have the same mind so he began to trace all across the earth what are the systems that speak to the mindset of people he found that culture has a way of helping to frame mindset so he became interested in culture what part of that content can i use to preserve continuity of a demonic mindset he found out that money seems to control loyalty people can bow to you when you have money so he went to the economy of the earth he's called the king of tyre he sits there on that mountain to make sure you never get blessed with your soul healthy when you come to him and say i want to prosper i want my children to go to church or i'm a man of god i'm trusting that financial resources be made available for kingdom activities satan says all that is nonsense there is only one condition 
bow to me i hope you know that jesus rejected that proposal but it is not only jesus satan has taken to that mountain there are many others that he held their hands i want to become famous i want the whole world to know me and he says come there is a mountain where i show you the glories of the world if it's money you can have it anything you can have it the only thing i want from you is that you must pledge a covenant of allegiance that for as long as you enjoy these things your worship will be to me and jesus said get thee behind me thou shall worship the lord and him alone shall thou serve now write this down please the antichrist system the Antichrist system is a system of civilization that is in total rebellion to the value system and the government of heaven. The Antichrist system is a value system or a system of civilization that is in total rebellion. Total rebellion to the government of heaven. It is also a system that usurps the will and the dignity, the will of men and the dignity of effective living. The, the Antichrist system will never allow the will of men to find expression. No, it works by subjugation. And it is also a system that never allows for a dignified life. You will never truly be under an Antichrist system and have long-term dignified living what is the goal what is satan really looking for what motivates his passion to destroy men what motivates his passion to destroy nations what motivates his passion to destroy men of god to destroy business people to destroy politicians to use the tool of religion the tool of economy to use that that all kinds of things what is his passion what is his motivation write this down what satan wants is total allegiance to him as the source and the sustainer of all things this is what he wants total worship and total allegiance to him as the source and sustainer of all things he fell down from heaven because of an agenda what was the agenda he wanted to run a parallel government satan did not want to dethrone god no he wanted to run a parallel government so that you can choose god or choose him it is still his strategy today every time satan comes and sees you in total allegiance to god he will come as an alternative please pay attention what we call crime what we call moral decadence what we call pain and hardship what we call terrorism what we call corruption are simply inventions that promote one and the same agenda they are different expressions of one and the same agenda to create a system that forcefully brings men all men christians non-christians from any race satan is interested in bringing everyone to a position where you worship him now as we began to advance and modernize as far as our civilization is concerned satan noted that there was something unique about economy now listen i hope you know money and economy is man's idea it's, it's not it's not a heavenly idea at all it's man's idea the idea of money transaction business is man's idea it's an invention a profitable one satan discovered that the greatest thing he can possess from a man to really be able to lord over him is time time he found out that every other thing he takes from man does not seem to produce that efficiency but there was one thing that if he can hijack is time that no matter who you are on earth 
real dominion is dominion over time if you do not have dominion over time you do not have dominion and satan found out that because our civilization please listen carefully our civilization is economically driven he found out that men are willing to give their time if they will get money so that with that money they will now have a means of exchange to solve their problems and meet their needs and satan said beautiful now i have found a strategy what is the strategy let me create a system that manipulates the economy of nations to make it unbearably difficult for men to be able to access the resources that provide for influence are we together that provide for sufficiency because once their needs are met i have found out that they are free and the moment they are free they will give their time to god so in egypt in egypt pharaoh began to oppress the people of god another pharaoh that did not know joseph but then they were giving them straw free of charge and then they would do the building the moment moses came to now propose their exodus the spirit of the antichrist walking through pharaoh got angry and said the remaining time you have is what you are using to serve god stop giving them straw use the remaining time to look for straw what did they tell moses leave that agenda we are willing to stay back don't punish us again so every time god sees a people calling upon the name of the lord father mother and children lifting the hands of jesus in worship and in praise and helping the nations to know him satan will come in economically then the man loses his job daddy let's pray don't talk to me again what is wrong with this man what is suddenly happening to the man he goes to the hospital you measure his bp and you find out that this man is getting sick are you seeing now trouble comes and the children now in an honest effort to help their father they say what can i do and satan says this is what i've been waiting for come to me i will show you what you can do to help your father by the time satan is done with them they will be in the middle of sodom and gomorrah remember lot settled near sodom he didn't enter sodom by the time abraham went to rescue him where did he find him why does a terrorist kidnap and demand ransom what does he want to do with the money what if he dies when someone amasses millions and billions in his account through corruption what does he want to do with it respectfully speaking what happens during election when people come and you find out that people seem to be bought over just with economic empowerment can i tell you this satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church he can allow you to have divine health a thousand times but not resources because he knows that with resources you will have dominion over time and the moment you have dominion over time you will have the time to bow your knees to the god of your salvation you can decide to set aside a day and say father mother and children today we are going to worship the lord when jesus was teaching and helping the people understand the kingdom an embarrassing situation happened there that is instructive the tribute collectors were sent to come and disrupt his program as soon as they got there they said jesus you claim you are teaching people but you've not paid your tax and jesus was in a very embarrassing situation and he said it's all right go and get the fish open the mouth take caesar's coin go and give it to him there is a message there anytime you are focusing on your spiritual growth and your love for god a stranger must visit you the tribute collectors satan knows that you will never have the time to concentrate loving and serving god for as long as your bills are not paid so the only way he disrupts your worship is that whilst you are focusing the tribute collector will come it will come as children's school fees it will come as rent issue it will come as health bills so jesus taught us the secret to finding peace make sure 
you have caesar's coin waiting while you are worshiping so that as soon as he comes you tell him don't distract me pick your coin and go here's how he put it give to caesar what belongs to caesar there are things that belong to caesar and even jesus respected it and then give to god what belongs to god are we together a system that was built by satan to make sure that all but especially believers are so subjugated to a point where they do not see value in serving god and there are all kinds of annexes of that expression in our society today this is the reason why crime corruption moral decadence all of these things continue to to rise geometrically and the government will keep doing their best the judicial system will keep doing their best is that true religious systems keep doing their best africa being a very religious continent and yet we may not seem to be making the kind of headway we should make there is a problem the problem is not the activities the problem is that we need to go back and re-examine carefully that we are immersed in a system it is largely a mind control system is that true it is an information that is godless then fortified by the presence of demon spirits we call it a stronghold a stronghold is a mindset is a belief system that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim in that state are we blessed ideas so when you want to introduce look at jesus i love jesus jesus shows up and here's what he says ladies and gentlemen here is my message repent for the kingdom is at hand within your reach what is repent let's go to your mind i want to help you now but the first thing i need to do is not just to cast out satan salvation is coming but i need to work on you there is something about your understanding that keeps you in servitude there is something about your understanding that keeps you irresponsible a young man is not just irresponsible like that there is a programming that makes irresponsibility marketable there is a mindset a programming that makes cultism marketable there is a mindset that makes corruption marketable so when the kingdom system comes listen carefully the kingdom system does not just produce miracles signs and wonders falling down healings that's wonderful but primarily the kingdom advances on the strength of the message the ideology this is where the real power of the kingdom is is in the message not just the actions someone i can begin to pray now for the sick or pray for people who are oppressed and these demons will leave them because they honor the word of god that we are speaking but the demons will be waiting at the junction they know that the mind of that victim is still fruitful for their entry all they need to do is manipulate a system again and they are back in comfortably so the real way to transform believers from this demonic software that continues to plague our society please listen number one is the message of the gospel because we are dealing with two kingdoms here it's a spiritual issue the issue of salvation is not a religious advocacy it truly is the answer to man's decadence the life of jesus jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other jesus is the way jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other jesus is daniel chapter 3 we're now in a time in history where satan knows that his time is short he knows that we're in the end times he knows that there is a global revival that is coming 
satan knows that like never before god has released his power upon the earth but satan also knows that there is gross ignorance in the church as far as how the kingdom advances we know how souls are saved but we do not know how the kingdom advances within a territory and within a sphere and a few people who try to bring these ideas are greatly persecuted do you know why because for as long as we just feel that once you are born again that's all your whole attention should just be on your spiritual growth that is true but that cannot be the only strategy Daniel chapter 3 let me show you something we're going to pray this is Babylon under the leadership of this king called Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold please look up here we see the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist again he will always bring an image to worship the image can be money the image can be fame the image can be lost the image can be anything the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits you know what this 90 feet and the breadth thereof six cubits and set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon we are reading pay attention Nebuchadnezzar now watch this this is the whole theme of this scripture is worship the Antichrist system worship not money not fame not even persecution worship but look at the structure of that worship before he built that image he made sure that every noble person was on his side look at those who were there Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together the princes governors captains are you seeing all those who he won judges treasurers counselors sheriffs rulers over provinces these are the people who came to the dedication of that image what do we call that influence what else is left as far as authority in society is concerned these are the mind control systems he made sure they were all represented in that dedication again princes governors captains judges treasurers there you find it treasurers counselors sheriffs rulers of the provinces come to the dedication of that image which the king has set up so when he sets up an image over a territory he does not disturb everybody yet he begins to scan where is that millionaire businessman come where is that gospel artist that has potentials to go around the world come when he gathers all the influencers he now builds the image watch this verse 3 and the princes governors captains judges treasurers counselors sheriffs rulers were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that nebuchadnezzar the king had set up they stood before the image uh-huh be patient then there was a cry to you is commanded not suggested commanded oh people see how the antichrist system works when it captures the nobles within a territory then decrees begin to come gradually gradually until it looks like it is something that is forceful it is commanded O oh people nations and languages verse 5 that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet the flute the harp the psaltery and all of this you will do what fall down and worship the image smart king he did not say worship me but you just worship my image while i stand back and I enjoy the same thing you see that now satan may not come to you directly and say worship me you'll be too much and you you have enough sense so he will say do you know what just worship your job just worship your business provided it is not jesus christ worship any other thing you are allowed because any other thing that is not him i have power over it hmm. worship your certificate worship your political position worship your achievement worship your beauty worship your intelligence even worship your anointing oh yes worship your church worship your religious activities provided it is not jesus the son i'm satisfied 
any other thing i can put my image there i can put my image in your business i can put my image in your reputation i can put it anywhere the only thing see everything can be satan's image if it is minus jesus please keep the scripture we'll soon be praying fall down and worship the golden image that nebuchadnezzar the king had set up verse 6 and whoso does not fall down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of burning fiery furnace why do you call the issue of finances economic meltdown what made it melt so therefore at that time when all the people had the sound and so on and so forth they fell down and worshipped all all of them when you see the people who inspire you falling down you will be motivated to join them and fall down too when the billionaire businessman who is your boss is worshiping and increasing in the billions while you are going to church and getting broke sooner or later your wife will say i don't understand this thing you are doing and initially you think he will not touch you until your child returns back from his school with the school fees they drive them away you say you know what god have tried for you anything you see me do don't blame me there is an exhaustion satan knows something about man that except you are engraced by god you cannot suffer long indefinitely there will be a breaking point so he will meet you at that point just when you graduated you were on fire from fellowship on campus oh why don't you you know just um join this club or join this group you'll become a million ah no in the name of jesus he knows he will allow time he will meet you after five years and say are you still here and you say come what did you even say before let i will agree but just explain let me understand now give us that scripture hmm. verse 8 now wherefore at the time at at that time certain chaldeans came near and accused the jews now we are going to see a contrast of kingdoms verse 9 they speak and said to king nebuchadnezzar oh king live forever that's what the king wants thou hast made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of all of these instruments and shall fall down and worship you 11 whoso does not fall down and worship he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace verse 12 now he says there are certain jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of babylon shadrach meshach abednego these men O king have not regarded thee they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up then nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring these boys and they brought them before the king this is the price that you pay for being different in a territory that is immersed in a system that is godless nebuchadnezzar spake and said it is true O shadrach meshach and abednego do not ye serve my gods nor worship the golden image which i have set up 15. if you hear all of these things make sure he says listen he says if ye worship not ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace and who is that god that shall deliver you out of my hands it has moved from the issue of worship to the issue of loyalty to god i love shadrach meshach abednego joshua selman answered the king and said unto him watch this O king when it has to do with matters of sociology and matters of governance we give you the respect that is due you but now that you have touched the issue of faith we are not careful to answer you in this matter 17 it says if it be so let me tell you that we are a people number one who are motivated by our love for god greater than result are you seeing the contrast of the kingdom life in the kingdom of darkness you are motivated by things ultimately to bow to satan whether you like him or not in this kingdom it is the love of god 
more than money more than fame more than titles here are people who are not only about to lose their office and their reputation lose their lives and they say if it is on account of that we are more than ready our god whom we serve he is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand O king 18 he says but if not what sort of a people are these that's the first time the king is hearing that there are people who do not mind we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up 19 then nebuchadnezzar was angry how many people have refused to be promoted because they know that once they are promoted there will be justice there will be equity how many people are you seeing the reason why many people don't do so much and yet they prosper and we sit down there saying they are prospering more than us no oh, do you know who and what they bow to satan was a witness when you were rolling in your living room that lord everything i have is yours then the next thing you just delve into oil and gas and the gods of the sea say you are joking we were there when we saw that worship you will not easily just win a contract like that if there was no adversary there will not be need for dominion please keep that scripture we're about to pray pay attention now he commanded notice are you seeing the first thing he did command the fire to be seven times hotter in their presence they are not yet inside but let them see the potential of the destruction that can come per adventure they will change verse 20 hmm. and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind them what does it mean to bind to limit to limit them and cast them into the burning fiery furnace follow me carefully we're almost done then these men bound in their coats and so on and so forth they were cast into the fire verse 22 therefore because of the king's commandment because the king's commandment was urgent the furnace was exceedingly hot the flame of the fire slew even the men that took up shadrach meshach and abednego imagine such a furnace and this man they fell down into the midst of the fire why satan wanted let me tell you this there is nothing that rewards satan more than punishing a dedicated believer in the presence of other potential deliverers because when they see the pain of one who loves god so much and things go bad it becomes it it amplifies the fear that's why when satan wants to attack believers he does not start with ordinary people he looks for those who have some kind of influence and then he deals with them in a way that discredits god so much this is the strategy next verse verse 24 nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished now these ladies and gentlemen i present to you the power of this kingdom that we represent isn't it amazing that when god is silent it is a message satan continues to do what he's doing but it gets to a time when you stand strong where you stand hopeful and know that this kingdom whether you lift me or not oh god i will not bow ah. lord i will bow to you to no other god but you, Lord. Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands and me. But you, Lord. And I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made. And all that has taken my heart Sing, Lord, I will bow I will bow to you To no other God But you, Lord Here 
hear me believers i bring you a message no matter who you are the strength of your allegiance to this kingdom will be tested in your lifetime i give you a guarantee by the god of heaven this one you will not pray it away you will only pray for grace to remain and see god show himself strong and mighty some of you as i'm speaking right now that is the season you are in it is on account of your strength for god you would have gotten a job five years ago if only you compromise but because you are standing you are now even looking like a fool family members are saying keep being stupid then they coin a scripture and say wisdom is profitable to direct is it christianity we will eat they will tell you and you feel stupid for loving him there are many people who have lost election today who have the credibility but because they made up their minds that they would do it right sometimes being right comes with a price just because you are right does not always mean you will experience temporal victory don't be ashamed of your tears let me show you scripture here if we do not train believers to know that there is a system that attempts to sabotage our allegiance to god we must get to a point where we restore honor to those who are in pains on account of their dignity for god can i tell you this there are people that have died today simply because they will not renounce Christ there are people today who may not be experiencing the kind of growth maybe in ministry because they will not go somewhere and get any other power outside of Jesus Christ and say Lord Jesus if you will not heal I rather stay and say I do not have the grace but my hand will not touch any charm or anything to make sure anybody is healed can I tell you this? The ways of the kingdom looks deceptfully slow. Everybody will seem to go ahead of you. You are a man of God and God wants to raise you to be a mighty man. And somebody calls you some group and tells you, look, you do ministry this way, you are going to suffer. It doesn't have to be an occultic thing. Just anything that takes you away from Jesus. And it looks marketable. There is a strategy that can increase membership for you. The worst one now is the issue of finance and comfort because the truth is we live in times you know for a long time the church has been shying away from this i'm not talking about some of these carnal things you see around money mm, but i'm talking about if we ignore the place i taught in zaria and maybe i'll wrap up with it there, there are four dimensions to the gospel that if we do not teach believers one spirituality Two, leadership and governance. Three, relationships. Four, economy. If believers are not empowered with these dimensions of spiritual knowledge, they will remain slaves forever in any territory they find themselves in. When you die, you will go to heaven, no? but as far as earth is concerned, you will be a servant, a slave forever. Spirituality men who love jesus sincerely not just as preachers not just as preachers i'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life i'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life five years after marriage no child very soon your family will call you and say look there is a man he's not exactly bad there's just something that we are used to it, it all of us that's how you even came self and yet in your visions the interesting thing is that while satan is doing all this nonsense you will go back to bed and see that god will not change what he has been saying your womb will carry a prophet be careful 
be careful be careful and all kinds of suggestions are coming from everywhere satan is building that image my brothers and my sisters let me tell you this many times you feel stupid when you look around and it looks like you are not moving forward sometimes respectfully speaking loved ones and people who are sincere can look at you and say look at this you graduated 20 years ago till now you have not even built a house the only thing growing in your life is your age look at your classmate he's even in dubai he's everywhere there and sometimes you say lord is this your plan for me when jesus was on that cross you would have called him defeated but something was happening that you did not see he hung between the nails and while he was hanging caesar herod and co were saying finally and satan was rejoicing since you will not bow i will hang you on a tree either ways you will have to listen to me and he closed his eyes in death hell was rejoicing we killed the son of god suddenly a stranger steps into hades the place of the dead what are you doing here and he says when sinners die where do they go i became sin now i'm here and the cohorts of hell were all on him how else would he tell us that he is victorious until we we have to see it in a context and that was the context satan and the cohorts of hell paul was shown this in a revelation fighting to force him now to bow down and when the legal claims of justice were made the bible says he made a public show of them watch this triumphing over them in judgment he now meets face to face with the one he created and say lucifer your rebellion give me the keys this is the kingdom we are part of revelation chapter one i was he that was dead and now is alive and i have the keys that's where he got it from watch this when he held that key he went to hades apostle peter taught us he preached to the saints right who had been waiting for this miracle of salvation they died in faith believing and when they believed he opened those prisons and he said let's go the hymn writer says up from the grave he arose when he came out he came out together with all those people watch this now the last enemy to be destroyed is death and he destroyed death and with power and glory the disciples were shaking you wasted our time we were part of this system now you brought a new kingdom we've lost everything we look like failures but when he resurrected he said all hail he entered the room without opening the door he's showing you the potentials of this kingdom that means look I used to think doors have to open for you to enter but I learned that there is still a way the door can still be closed and you will enter all hail he said all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me I know you look like failures for walking with me for three and a half years but you are about to see the power in this kingdom go with this authority go and disciple nations teach them everything I've taught you teach them that somewhere in their life they may see a similitude of defeat but they should wait teach them everything I taught you and while you teach them I am with you I will confirm your words with signs confirm your words with miracles hear me every time evil seems to prevail over good something is happening 
that is true for this nation that is true for africa can i tell you this our beloved country and our beloved continent there's an army rising up there's an army I'm telling you by prophecy and from scripture it will not end the way you are seeing it like this no see Jesus is not coming back as king of a weak beaten defeated church the kingdom that we serve for a long time it looks like it's a shame to be a child of God but I tell you we're about to enter an era of the apostolic move of God upon the earth economically politically this nation will experience something that it has never seen from independence i tell you this by the spirit of god listen where death ends is also where resurrection starts for now it does not yet appear what god is doing in your life sometimes as we preach the gospel as servants of the living god people even look at us as a nuisance to civilization what are you teaching calm down you may not see it yet but something is happening from the spirit of god through our spirit to your spirit man and your mind when satan wanted to propagate this demonic software of babylon it is a spirit then belief systems then destruction now that god is bringing deliverance it comes from the spirit through a new belief system it takes a while you may not look like it oh politician but god saved you from winning that election because there is one you are going to let me show you something we have read the end of the book we know what will happen hmm. revelations 18. i know you look cheated i know you look defeated brothers and sisters look at me let me show you how babylon will end the bible already told us the end after these things i saw another angel come from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory what an angel next verse and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit now follow carefully i want to show you something and then we'll pray for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication so babylon is a goddess she sits upon a horse until you fraternize with her you will not reign in this kingdom she has called politicians she has called men of god she has called business people you want to rise it is not the way it's not just about this school thing <clears throat> come let us get into a partnership there are many people today that you continue to admire let me tell you the truth their excelling is based on their fraternity with babylon let me show you the end of the story it says the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants businessmen there it is the merchants of the earth are wax rich how through the abundance of her delicacy then i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her this is the word for you now you are almost getting there but come out of her my people why that ye be not partakers of her sins that ye that ye receive not of her plagues there is a plague that is coming on the earth 
for her sins have reached unto heaven and god had remembered her iniquity be patient watch this it says reward her even as she rewarded you and double her according to this and that and that next verse it says how much she has glorified herself the pride of this antichrist system called babylon and live deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she said in her heart i sit a queen and i am no widow and i shall see no sorrow this is babylon talking therefore shall her plagues come in how long death mourning famine she shall be utterly burnt with fire for strong is the lord who judged her watch this and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon that mighty city in one hour is your judgment come now watch this let me show you it says the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn for her and no man buyeth her merchandise anymore there are people buying it now they are buying let me show you what she sells do you want to see what she sells babylon let's see what babylon sells number one the merchandise of gold the merchandise of silver precious stones pearls fine linen purple silk scarlet cyan wood all manner of vessels of ivory all manner of precious wood of brass of iron of marble pay attention to 13 cinnamon odors she sells anointing she sells frankincense she sells wine she sells all kinds of graces she sells abundance she sells wheat let's start reading now she sells beasts she sells sheep. she sells horses she even sells chariots let's what else does she sell slaves and what all they are her product she can give you influence the souls of men as an artist you can get into fraternity with her and sing anything and the world must listen to you because she has sold you the souls of men where did she get those souls the ones who came to do business with her what shall it profit a man if he gains so as she's giving you there's something she collects and sells it to whoever wants now here's what the bible says i it says that you prosper is that true and be in health but make sure your soul does not become the commodity that goes in exchange i can tell you there are people who have sold their souls to the devil not by saying satan take no the more you leave god as you rise there is an exchange that is happening the more your fame increases and your fire goes down business people hear me respectfully speaking because it, this money thing sometimes brings a lot of arrogance one people have money i'm a billionaire i'm a millionaire whether in naira or dollars or whatever currency usually that state deafens people and they don't listen to anything again i am rich the mistake of i think the laudation church they said i am rich i have no need for anything anything that would take your place in my life may it never come any door that would take your place in my life may it never open why have i taught you this today number one to help you see the motivation behind the evil in our society it is not a sociological issue it is not just an educational issue in truth from a sociological standpoint when we start addressing the ills in society we look at indices like education quality of living governance and the rest and we are right but that is the reason why our law courts will continually prosecute criminals because there is a software they go to prison they come out they return back they come out they return back they come out they return back because their bodies are messless executors of a mindset that only the gospel can erode 
the gospel in its entirety the message and the value system respectfully speaking and not not to create any sense with with every sense of honor and respect it is also the reason why families do not last it is statistic tells us i hope i'm right that one out of every two marriages may not last long and will end it doesn't mean the people are wrong it is that somebody somewhere or both of them have exposed themselves to a programming that is not consistent with the kingdom is there a way to prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity yes what is the solution it is called the gospel now you know that the gospel is not only a message that saves you have received the message that saves now receive the ideology that transforms the ideology that transforms you the ideology that transforms your society you can take that ideology like a software program it to your children if you never see them again you can trust what they will become the software is that powerful this is why we have to pray that god will raise people who are connected to kingdom first then we now spread them across the seven strata of human activities a politician that is not just a christian fanatic but one who understands the kingdom will be in a better position to legislate because number one he knows that god is the god of all flesh he's not in that office to represent christians he's in that office to represent god's creation so his ideas even though reference from scripture will be communicated in a way and a manner that makes all and sundry to advance in their lives fanatism is not an honor to any religion concerned it is still a deception by Satan because it punishes all involved. Fanatism and religion does not profit one party or the other. It looks like it profits one party. But when the full scope of the deception is unleashed, everyone involved suffers. Can I tell you this? When God sent me to this city, one of the graces and one of the instructions and one of the things that he gave is that by the grace of God, God wants to raise a people who are kingdom people, but people of influence. He will station them in strategic positions, but they will not just be people who are going around to earn a living. They are people who know that they are there on assignment. This is why he gave us the grace. I'm not a politician. I don't do politics. I don't do partisan politics. I'm a man of God. But let me submit to you. God has given us the authority that enthrones kings and removes them. It is true. What is our assignment tonight? Understand. Go back home now and see your child who is always stealing. It is not the stealing. You can flog that child till tomorrow. Go back as a priest, not just a father. Call that child. And say in addition to what you are going to receive the spirit that is behind you in the name of Jesus Christ are you seeing that now go back as a politician and enter your office stretch your hands over the National Assembly and say in the name of Jesus I stand not just as a an honorable member or a senator I stand with priesthood and I speak let the kingdom come within this fair as a business person don't just resume work tomorrow no everyone who is coming is is in one of two kingdoms you are not just there to buy and sell listen we must develop a new value system let me encourage all of you who own schools here i know there are a number of people here that own schools within this city and across this nation I beseech you by the mercy of God without any sense of fanatism introduce programs that correct destructive beliefs there are programs it doesn't matter whether people write it in the exam or not let there be programs that help people honesty morality and conscience spiritual growth leadership financial intelligence introduce this so that the children from infancy will begin to learn ethics of responsibility and they grow to become people who will change society 
And I pray that in the name of Jesus, God will empower people here. I know that God has helped people. But God will empower people that will set up quality leadership institutes. That the day will come is out of those institutes who enthrone kings within territories. Merely saying one day, you know, a society will change is just a joke. There must be programs and there must be intelligence applied to it. Have I wasted your time tonight? The seven mountains. Religion. God is helping us. We who are the servants of God. The mountain of family. This is one area that God has raised marvelous vessels. Like Pastor Kingsley. Oh yes. Oh yes. You cannot tell how many homes and how many lives have been put back in order. Because he honored that grace. What of politics? There are several politicians here. God is counting on you. Not just to be a fanatic, but to be a nation builder. To come up with perspectives that are referenced from scripture. That your presence there will ward off darkness. You can be an apostle in politics. Then media. Arts and entertainment. We've discussed it here. Can I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters? When we talk about the revival that is coming, we're not necessarily just talking about crusades alone. The context of the move of God coming will not just be spiritual in that area alone. Civilization has evolved. God will have to bring people with intelligence. We're already there at the crusade grounds. Everybody will not be there. We will keep casting the devils and healing the sick. But in addition, we'll keep helping people who will rise everybody here is connected to a family somehow go back and begin to change that software be intentional you are a father don't sit down and allow your children to learn anything and grow and just give them money and cars that's not an inheritance you are a politician make up your mind don't just leave and exhaust your tenure start mentoring others not just godfatherism mentorship teach them the ethics of governance you are a businessman don't just as we call it in nigeria the slang chop alone and don't just give people money that's not the only thing they need most people don't need money most people need a transformed mind create a platform of four or five people and help them the value of influence is that you are able to lift others with that platform god gives you I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. He leaves you with an assurance that the night cometh when no man will be able to walk again. But I tell you this, God has brought us to such a time as this. We must stand up and fight Babylon. We do not just fight with bows and spheres alone. Number one, we fight by introducing the gospel to the system. First as a message, the more people are saved, the more God can find many men that he can use to promote his agenda. Number two, we must bring the ideology of the kingdom. We must translate the ideology of the kingdom into programs, including sociological programs that the world can receive. Many of them will not receive it from a standpoint of fanatism. It must not be a Christian's program. It must come a value system reference from scripture that is intentional about changing people. Three things you should never fight as I round up. Number one, do not fight the value of spiritual connection. You will lose in today's world. The strength of every man is in his spiritual connection. Number two, do not fight any opportunity to learn leadership. Leadership has nothing to do with titles. You must know how influence is produced. It is the key to making men buy into your ideologies. Number three, do not fight relationships. Be fruitful means re be relational. Everything multiplies because of relationship. It is based on your relationship with the Holy Spirit that you grow. Number four, do not fight economy. Please do not fight economy. Do not fight economy. Don't go around saying all these people preaching prosperity. Be careful. I know there are imbalances, but don't join the devil in, in misleading believers. A territory 
that is not economically empowered will be the territory that serves there is a dimension of the gospel that requires economic empowerment and i know that god is going to raise people i'm unashamed about it your heart must not be there your heart will be with jesus and then he will give you resources that are equivalent to the resources of a nation and you will do wonders as for me i made a vow and a covenant with god that as a spiritual leader i will not just lead a people who are passionate towards god signs and wonders miracles that's wonderful but in addition to that i believe in influence and then inculcating value systems that can transform society abuja and this nation and this continent is too small if god can find people enough who are connected spiritually understand leadership people who understand this kingdom networking and then people who are economically empowered this will be satan's nightmare this will also be the nightmare of the antichrist system are you ready to pray father let your kingdom come lift your voice and pray let your kingdom come let your kingdom come let your kingdom come in the name of Jesus Christ now we understand the motivation behind the ills in our lives ills in our society ills in family that more than just the things that happen more than crime and decadence and cultism and corruption there is a spiritual problem that must be addressed the spiritual problem number one is rejecting jesus and rejecting his value system and that has come because of a programming a mindset fortified by demon spirits called the antichrist system is a babylonian strategy babylon babylonian here means it is a spiritual context lift your voice and pray we are that generation that will not bow in the name of jesus yet we will rise we will excel and represent the purposes of the kingdom because of our presence in this city advancement of all sorts will find expression because of our presence in this nation in governance in politics go ahead and pray we decree and declare in the name of jesus the christ of god it may take time but we submit to the training it may take time but we submit ourselves to the dealing this apostolic and prophetic order of kingdom advance are you praying hallelujah now please listen it is because of the existence of this system that he gave us power over and power against it will take more than just advice it will take more than words to subdue this demonic influence that has followed families and has followed individuals the last prayer and we're done father the level of grace i need for this season grant it unto me the level of grace that is required that in and through my life the powers of darkness are dislodged from the life of my children from the life of my husband from the life of my wife my business in the name of jesus i obtain that engracing go ahead and pray it takes power this is a kingdom of power demonic forces are real oppressions of darkness are real you don't just need power to solve spiritual problems you need power to solve political problems you need power to solve economic problems you need power to solve family problems you need power to solve sociological problems to solve employment unemployment problems Elohim Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done Elohim Adonai hallelujah please don't miss next week i'm going to be sharing something very i after the miracle service i'll be sharing something powerful the next series that we're getting into we're going to be dealing with the kingdom and god is going to be showing us a lot of things you will see the predictability of territorial transformation 
that it is not very difficult to transform a territory it looks hard only because of the complication of the men that are, the men that are there as many as there are students in different universities you can predict the graduation of the students you can predict that medicine whether it's in um, 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 abu or unilag or, or whatever university because there is a common program someone in lagos does not have to come down to university of abuja to be a graduate of medicine once he has the program there right from where he is he can change it's not whether people are living in Abuja or Lagos, wherever. Once we can find the content methodically arranged that transform people, everybody, it doesn't matter what church you now go to. I'm praying that you will get to that time where you don't have to go to specific churches to know you are secured. That at least any major church you can sit down and know like a university that I'm still safe there that two people from different churches can talk kingdom and know that it was the same curriculum that was used to build us god's idea is not to have everybody follow one man of god no mm -mm. he will not get the job done he may show that the individual is successful but the job will not be done god's idea is to see that his value system is represented everywhere so that believers don't have to go too far to find him everywhere from family you find it there business you find it everywhere you can find his value system i pray for you in the name of jesus that these truths you have learned let it speak over your life this week in the name of jesus christ please keep standing everyone we have just a minute we will always do this for as long as we live let's minimize movement very quickly in one or two minutes there are people here you've heard me talk about two kingdoms the kingdom of satan darkness and the kingdom of god's dear son you are here and you are saying apostle whilst listening to you the holy ghost began to speak to me that it's important i make this commitment for jesus or you are here and you are saying i've given my life to jesus but i need a genuine renewal this is home for you if you belong to any of these categories and you following online also all the overflows down to the basement outside doesn't matter where i'm going to ask those who are inside here and around the balcony just make your way we're going to start clapping for them please you want to make jesus lord of your life don't sit down and wait for anybody he brought you here god bless you let's celebrate them as they come let's celebrate them as they come run to jesus Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Allow them come to Jesus. This can be the beginning of a new and a genuine journey. A journey to transformation. A journey to kingdom relevance. Celebrate them. They are still coming. Celebrate them. They are still coming. God bless you. God bless you. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved. I think I love Jesus, but I'm not sure. Join them. Join them very quickly if you are not sure. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Join them very quickly. Are they still coming? We have just a minute or two left very quickly. God bless you. 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 Now, listen it matters that souls are saved through our lives soul winning is not a church thing you can win souls anywhere at all are we together thank you so much for all of you who are in front here those following from any nation uh, watching from every whatever television station you are connecting to and then by way of internet please join in this prayer if you want to make jesus lord of your life all those in the overflows outside just stand in faith as we pray this prayer please lift your hands to jesus if you can those in front say this after me let it be very loud and very clear say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i have heard your word i make jesus my lord my savior and my king I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken 
over my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I also receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we present to you these ones that you died for. It's an honor to lead them to Jesus. Someone help this woman. She didn't pray that prayer. Anybody help her? And you can just help her. Just speak to her. Just lead her in the prayer. Our time is gone. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these precious people. And we declare in the name of Jesus that the grace to live victorious Christian lives, may that grace be released upon you now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that everything that is not of God, let it live your life now. I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the word. And I declare from today by the power that has raised Christ from the dead, the grace to go forward ever and backward never. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to God's family. Welcome to Koinonia in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please, I'd like you to follow the counselors. They are waving the placard. Let's celebrate them as they go. All of you in concert, please this way. Praise the name of the Lord. Just to announce to you by God's grace that next week here in Abuja is our miracle service for the month of July. Amen. As always, please don't come alone. Come early. There is serious destiny business to be done on that day. And come with your prayer requests. Invite as many who need a touch from God. There are people who are trusting God for all kinds of miracles. Invite them. God has anointed us. He's granted the grace to be able to represent his purposes on that wise. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. After the grace, do well to greet one another. And please make sure that you are careful while you walk down the aisle so that you do not enjoy yourselves. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and see you on Sunday.